of 15 students. And up to now, we have the enrolled students in the Faculty of Medicine are 160. My graph is only showing up to 2013 because that's when we started really changing to e-learning. So as time was passing by, the number of students enrolled kept on increasing drastically. This was not met by the number of faculty members. By 2011, we had about 46 faculty members serving other institutions within their college. They have to do clinical work as well at the same time teach. So they didn't have enough time to engage with the students and teach them. So, and at the same time, they were using out, uh, outdated old methods where they come to class right on the board. Very few of them had projectors and they would keep to themselves. They never shared with other faculties. The internet access was there, but for only the administration for exchanging emails and not for learning purposes. And it became very difficult to, to, to support these faculties. As students only learned based on what the faculty knew, but not, there was no much research that they could do. So with the help of MEPI project, Kilimanjaro Christian Medical University College thought of employing modern teaching methods. One of them was e-learning and the other is team-based learning. I'll explain a little about team-based learning. Students are grouped in two small groups of about seven to ten, and then they are provided with a folder, which we normally put on our e-learning learning management system, and then they are given a period of time to, to study the material. But at the same time, the faculty member has to come within the session and listen to the difficulties that they are facing. So and then after the, the, that period of time, they are assessed with individual assessment where everyone has to respond according to what they understood. Then they come back sitting in, this, in the cohorts, respond to that similar exam, but now with a little bit reduced time. And then they earn a score from the group. Then they, they again sit down for an application exam. All these exams are facilitated, are done online. So there are steps that we fought in order to make sure that e-learning is fully functioning. One of them was to make sure we have a centralized campus area network. Before, every institution within KCMC had their own internet. Projects come, they have their own satellite dishes. So we made sure we have one network. If you're in the hospital, you can easily communicate to someone in the college, someone in the research institute. So we have one network. At the same time, we have a, a, it has a fiber optic backbone so, so that you can have fast data move around the college. And this, in, this fiber optic cable has been connected also to our, our nearest internet service provider. It is worth a 20-year investment and it cost 100,000 US dollars. It's all buried on the ground. So if you come to KCMC, don't hope that you will see this. It's under the ground. And also, we had to renovate the learning facilities and not, not only end there, but make sure we orient our users on how to use these learning facilities. One of them was to make sure we have a computer laboratory. You can see the design of the computer laboratory. This is to enable team-based learning so that they can still sit in their computers and use them in teams. And we opted for Mac computers because they were a good at virus resistance. I wouldn't say they are 100%, at least 90% we are sure. So we save time for having to maintain the computers. And on average, we always run surveys once a month. We have a particular day we, 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 we run the surveys. Uh, 120 students visit the computer lab per day. So this shows that it is helping them, they are using them. All the medical students, coming student, new students, MD1s, were provided with portable devices. We want them to have continuous learning, not only when they are at the college. So because if we have internet access at the college, they can download whatever they want. When they go home, they can, they can learn. The portable devices provided to them they, have, they can keep power for about eight hours. So at least we are sure they can save eight hours at home and do learning. 
And if you see in the picture, it shows that we are no longer using paper, paperwork. This was taken like five minutes to the exam. Students are reading from the tablets. So we, at least we are helping them save money. Most of them are from, they don't have enough money for upkeep at the college. And we did not end there. Our waste laboratory was too small. It has a capacity of uh, about 50 students. So, and most of the time, most of the students were missing out on the practicals as they had to crowd around the instructor. So now it has been enabled with ICT. Uh, the instructor just sits in one corner, you can see on the other right picture, and does the demonstration. Students sit back on their seats and watch whatever the instructor is doing, that is demonstrated on the left. They don't have to crowd on the, on the instructors. We are sure now that everyone is seeing whatever the instructor. Previously they would say, do you see the malaria parasite? Then people say, yes, I think, from one microscope. So we are not sure if they are telling the right thing. Someone could put the slide the other way and mislead the rest. So now at least they can all follow whatever the instructor. But this can only take about 50 to 60 students. So the rest, we have an overflow. It goes to the computer lab. So as some are in the lab, others sit in the computer lab and are watching whatever is happening. And we keep records of these, which we post to students, the videos after, then they can continue to learn. We also went to the classrooms, make sure we have audiovisual systems, we have projectors, and these are the, the, the class representatives are taught on how to use them as well as faculty members, so they always control this by themselves. They can as well record videos which they share, they share among themselves. And we also have video conferencing facility, that is the picture that you see on the right. Uh, th that is, those are our students at the college communicating to students from Duke University School of Medicine, our partner university. So we have journal clubs, we have faculty members, we instruct people from Duke University, but within the college, if we have a cohort that cannot fit within one lecture room, we have an overflow. Instructors can sit here and communicate to two classes at the same time. And through the MEPI project, it has given chance to students to come up with innovative ideas. We have a program called Medical Education Innovation Award, whereby students come up with proposals of what they think can help them learn better. And these proposals, they must have a mentor who is the faculty member and they must have a project investigator who is the MED student. So they all write a, a project, that, but the owners of the project are the students. And some of the projects that the students have come up with have been ICT enhanced. And this is the e-library, which is the, the university is now developing. And we hope by the end of October, we shall have the e-library fully functioning as we've already started purchasing the books and the room is already renovated and the computers will be installed in about two months' time. <coughs> we have the anatomy dissection room. Uh, it is more of a prototype of the wet lab that you saw before, so they, they don't have to all crowd on one cadaver. They can sit back on their own cadavers and then follow whatever the instructor is teaching. So we are trying to avoid overcrowding. We want everyone to see whatever the instructor is doing. What you're seeing there is the media center. This has been installed in the surgery room. We had the instances where patients would complain a lot of students are around them and sometimes they mess up stuff. So now in the surgery room, the, the instructor gets in with very few students and the rest sit back in the reporting room and watch whatever is taking place. For demonstration purpose, I didn't want to zoom the picture, but the, this, this picture was taken from the reporting room where students sit back and watch the, whatever is happening in the surgery room. So after they take the, the surgery, we record the videos and we go to the media center. We have an instructional designer who, 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 who edits these videos and then we share them to, with, with the students. And with the help of Duke University School of Medicine, we are now working on massive open online courses, that is MOOC. Uh, we are already designing 
a cause that is parasitology and entomology. We are, I, we hope by next academic year, which begins in October for us, we shall be using these mice for nine causes and they will be open. The platform that we are using is Coursera. But when we record all these videos, the lectures, we need to share them with the students. So we went ahead to introduce a learning management system. The learning management system we use is LCMS Plus, Learning Content Management System. This has been developed at Duke University School of Medicine. And the reason why we chose this one, we're exposed to many, like Moodle, Blackboard. The reason why we chose this is that it was specifically designed for medical education. It has so many features that are related to medical education. You can record procedures. You can have students, when they go to the field, the logbook. We don't have to use the logbook. We can have them use the learning management system. So I wonder if with these logbooks, if we can know how many people have been exposed to a certain procedure. But now we can track. This year we have piloted the learning management system in year three, which is a clinical class. It's, I can't give you good, it's not good results, but we hope next academic year we shall have them use it for the recording when they go to their patients in the, in the clinical attachments. And this system was donated to Kilimanjaro Christian Medical University College due to the strong collaboration that already existed within KCMC and Duke. And we hope in the near future to share the system with the rest of the universities within Tanzania, the medical universities. Faculties have been able to distribute their learning material ahead of time. Students now have them like two weeks before time a week. They read. When they come to class, we want to avoid faculty writing. It's just discussion. So we always encourage faculties to upload the material before they go. And I can say a good number of them do that. And what you see there is our home page. This, it has acted as, uh, it tracked the, the different activities that are taking place. So that is the academic calendar for year one students. So they know if I come in at eight, this is the person coming, their goals and objectives are uploaded there, the material is there, or even links to where to go and get more information are all uh, uploaded on the system. But our faculties were also too busy. So we introduced online assessment uh, and it was not easy. We had to go step by step. So after preparing the environment, we had to train the faculty members. But they are not uploading the exams. They were too late. So we had to put up standard operating procedure. In case you want an online exam, make sure two days before you've informed us, we help you upload the, the, the exam. And if we are to assess, to, to assess you to, on the exam date, you don't have to run away. We want you around because there are some uh, er er queries that can rise up within the exam. So we have, we really prepared our faculties and our students by orienting them not only once, but several times provided videos to guide them so that they can read on their own. And it's been working so far. We've pilot, the, the, the online assessment is used for medical students year one, year two, and year three for theory exams. The number of questions that we can assess, we have multiple choice, true and false, matching items, free response, short response, but with free response uh, uh, questions that can go more than one word, the faculty member has to come into the system and do the marking because students have different ways they can phrase their answers. Uh, but the rest of the question, it's marked it automatically. So these days, as soon as the students submit the exam, it's instantly marked and they have the results. So the maximum we can take to release student results is one week. And faculty members have saved time to now engage in other activities. We are seeing them participate in the Innovation Awards, mentor training research. And this is really encouraging them and they've been able to publish some papers. But, but at the back of all this, we have a monitoring and evaluation office. These ones keep monitoring us all the time. And they've been able to use the ICT facilities to run surveys on now the faculty, the faculty members and students are using these ICT services. And also these ICT facilities provide reports to faculty members that they use to, to evaluate how much we are contributing to medical education. 
And one of the results is here. The, we, we measured the student perception towards using our learning management system. And you can see in the column of consensus, a consensus of about 80% is really considered significant. So shows they are liking it, they like the quality, and it's enhancing their learning. And to me, as a learning management system specialist, I'm happy and proud that I'm really doing my job here. So we had a, a publication of implementing a learning management system in an African setting, and this has been published in the African Journal of African Academic Journal of Medicine. So you can visit and get it. And we have other publications that are coming soon about what we are doing in KCMC. Uh, there were so many challenges that we went through, more so with the uh, born before computers people. They are all they are really hard to convert. First of all, they fear that they, 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 lack, they will lack ownership. They will not own the the, 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 the information that they upload onto the e-learning, uh, more so with the learning management system. But we, what we did was to identify some few people who showed interest. First of all, we didn't shock the entire acad uh, university program. So we, we started off with the young students that come into the college. That is year one. So as soon as they come to the college, you introduce them and make them aware this is what you are supposed to be using to learn. Don't, uh, don't go back to paper. And this, they are motivated, they like clicking, they like moving around, so they always encourage faculties to use these e-learning facilities. They're like, you didn't upload material? No, we don't have flashes. I cannot put your flash in my tablet, you give me a virus. So they always refuse. So we use our students as backbone to motivate faculty members to use the learning management system. And in most of the cases, faculty members come and say, a student has told me to put my material on the learning management system. So they always do that. And also there are some key faculty members who really show interest in using the learning management system, and they've always taught their fellow faculty members on how to use them. But all this, we know that change is inevitable. We cannot go away from using IT. Now people developing massive online courses. What? We also have to be on board. But we do embrace our technology by providing orientations. We've come up with uh, standard operating procedures. We have work plans that this, you, in order to get to this step, you must go through this. And we are properly documenting each and everything that we are doing at Kilimanjaro so that in case of change in, in the workforce, they can easily cope up with what is already in place. And because of this, when we used to have online exams, at first, MEP was only able to procure 40 computers. Our classes are 160 and 150 on average. So we could have students locked up in rooms before they sit for an exam. We get in a few. Then it was hectic and we are not sure of the security of the exam because some go out, others come in. And because of this, the provost has procured 90 iMac computers in support of their online assessment. That's why you saw the computer lab full of computers. And now we are able to have a cohort of, 100, of 200 attempt an exam at the same time. And in the near future, we hope to have about 400 attempt an exam at the same time. I would like to acknowledge the following people who have made it possible for us to get to where we are. More so Duke University School of Medicine, which has always provided expertise to us. This is the team that is behind the e-learning. They are too young, but full of innovative ideas. Welcome to Kilimanjaro. You can see the mountain free of charge.